Hey there, Jamie Wolf here, and uh, my buddy Cyrus is here helping me today with some programming on my new online training uh, platform. As you can see, I've created a beautiful little office space here where we lead all kinds of seminars and have up to 40 people in a classroom here that I can see on the screen. So I wanted to talk to you today just a little bit about what's going on, uh, both politically, economically, uh, socially, spiritually, all of it, uh, in terms of the murder of Mr. Floyd. Uh, as you all know by now, uh, George Floyd was violently murdered by a police officer, and we have been seeing the protest and the resulting outrage. I've had some calls from different departments, and those calls have asked me what they can do in terms of their training, and what they can talk to people about. And one department has reached out even wanting me to do a session uh, with their officers because they're experiencing so much trauma around this. People are thinking about the murder of Mr. Floyd and, and we're thinking about it in terms of, and somebody said, is this going to be the breaking point? Uh, and if you've had my classes, you all know that I like to use the term pivot, right? Pit, pivot, dip. It's the, the three things. We are definitely in a pit here nationally right now. People who are successful, don't just stay in that pit, they actually pivot. And so rather than this being a moment where it's the breaking point, I would rather us think about in terms of this being the tipping point. And so what do I mean? We use this term, it's a kind of a court term, and if you look it up, called the preponderance of evidence. When we're talking about convicting someone of a crime or writing a probation report, we use two things to look at what should happen to that person. One are aggravating factors, one is mitigating factors. Mitigating factors would be the reasons why we should take mercy on this person. Aggravating factors are, well, wow, this person really needs to be kept away from society. A broad generalization and overgeneralization, but you get my point. And then we weigh those things and we look at what is the preponderance of evidence. So where is there more evidence? Is there more evidence that this person should be given another chance? Or is there more evidence that this person should be sent to prison or given 30 days in jail? We all know how this works in law enforcement. This idea of the preponderance, I've thought about it a lot though for a long time because what I know is true in terms of events and changes and shifts in how we do business, it generally comes when one person steps up and is the person that weighs the scales and pushes it down. And we know from history it can be just one person. We have thousands of examples. We have Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who stood up and said, I have a dream. We all know what his mission statement was. I want my children to be judged by the content of their character and not by the color of their skin. I would say here that there's parts of me right now that are grieving that Martin Luther King Jr. is not here and also happy that he's not seeing that even though we've had this revolution, we know these truths, we know what needs to be done. We did not. We failed to, in law enforcement, take the dip. And what is the dip? It's the dip of discomfort. We find ourselves in the pit, we make a pivot, and we take a dip. We haven't recognized that there is still so much work to do in terms of equity and power and recognizing what's happened here. So this is the time. Are we going to see this as the moment where law enforcement actually pivots and does something different? Or are we going to stay on the basketball court and keep banging into the same person over and over again, hoping for a different result? It's time for a big change. So how do we do this? Each person needs to make a personal commitment that they are going to change how they do business. The one thing that I can control is me. How am I being in the world? Am I really being a loving and kind person? Am I using my power and authority that I have? Am I using that in a way that is benefiting everyone? Am I being just in my decisions? And then when I recognize moments where I'm not being my best self, being willing to make that pivot and take the dip of discomfort and say, I didn't do that very well. Let me have a do-over. Because what are the stakes here? There is no do-over for Mr. Floyd. It's over. There is no do-over for the officers that stood there and watched and assisted during the eight-minute murder of a man, a human being. How do these things happen? Well, we look at these things in my classes in ethical decision-making and risk management. I can explain the neurobiological responses to fear. I can tell you why all of these things happen. But what I know is true right now 
is that each and every one of us can become the preponderance. We can become the tipping point where things change because so many of us are so tired of seeing the same videos and the same horrible things happening to people of color in our communities. And it's time for us as human beings to stand up and say, that I am responsible as long as I am not doing something affirmative to change the way things are. Speaking up, having professional courage with our other officers when someone makes a crass joke and saying it's just not okay, it's not a right, and it never was. So the preponderance is my willingness to step forward and say, I am going to be the change that I want to see in the world, to quote Gandhi. And it really means that I have to have more courage than I've ever had before. So that's my little message from my new office today. And I want to tell you that I'm full of hope, actually. I'm, I'm horrified. I'm terrified. And I'm full of hope. Because we've been here before. It's our responsibility to educate ourselves so that we don't recreate the historical patterns that have plagued our country since the times of slavery and beginning with our indigenous peoples in this country. It's time for us to pivot and then get ourselves out of the pit. People who do pit pivot dip know that I have to get uncomfortable and be willing to get uncomfortable in the interest of growth. I have to say I'm sorry. So I've given you some intense things to think about today. Where am I, the preponderance, for proactive change, for inclusion? How do I be the preponderance? Many of my friends are asking me this. The whole world is suffering and it's time for us to show up. I'm gonna show up as the preponderance for good. And I'm inviting you to do the same and do that with me. This is Jamie Wolf checking out.